Boy, has everybody been on a roll. Today, we're going to talk about some controversy in the Delphi case and answer some of your questions. Well, hello, my silky friends. Whew. Has there been a lot of controversy going on? My goodness. First of all, if I have added to that, I am truly sorry. Um, we're going to discuss... Some of the things that you all asked and, and maybe had a problem with in my last video. And look, if you have a concern or a comment, let's talk about it. So I'm going to go over some of your comments, but then I'm going to leave some very spicy links. Yeah, you're probably going to want to come at me. What else is new? My handy dandy glasses. All right, we're going to start with LGW. I understand everything you said, but I am concerned that he isn't going to make it. He looks really, really bad. I concur. Other thing is, they still had something like 1,000 pages of papers from his defense team that the prison had not given him. That prohibits him from being able to participate in his own defense. What is protocol for giving inmates their paperwork from their attorneys? Um, you know, of course, everything I say is knowledge from the place that I work, okay? Actually, researching uh, Westville, people in my jail have it good. Um, we do have a private attorney room, and they are allowed to keep their paperwork. They have their booking sheets and stuff. The only time that things are taken away from an inmate is if Oh, how do I say this? Um, they are in threat of unaliving themselves, and it is a, a real potential. Anything that could cut or harm in any way or that they could do, and believe me, they are real creative. That would be the only reason that, you know, papers would be withheld from him. And if that is, you know, what the lawyers are complaining about, then that is a legitimate problem. Um, yes, I agree. He does look like he's going downhill. So let's look at some other stuff you mentioned. Aaron W. says, he looks like he's being given dry trays. So on surveillance cameras, it looks like he's being fed, but little to nothing is on the trays. I don't know if that's true or not. Look, there are a thousand ways to make somebody's life miserable. I mean, if you've ever been married, you know that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are they not feeding him? That would be definitely something to look into. The worst criminal in the world still deserves to be fed, even if they are 100% guilty and they've done heinous things. I mean, that is not something that you withhold. You know, where I am, we're very lucky with having... Decent food for jail, let me just put it that way. You know, I don't know. Prisons are notorious for really bad, bad food. I've eaten in those, too. I don't recommend. But, yeah, bottom line, if that is happening, then that is a legit complaint. Sue Dennis says, uh, So we have a person on trial being treated like a tried and found guilty max security prisoner. No justice here. And in my opinion, there are too many not-so-trusty prisoners that are allowed to roam free. Then if something happens to RA, Ellie can blame the trustee. I'm sure it happens all the time. The law should provide and mandate a better situation and resources for those charged waiting jail. Just my opinion. Um, you know, you do have a point there. He's not found guilty. Unfortunately, because things go on years and years and the jail system being what it is, you really don't get any different treatment as to whether you're guilty or not. I mean, think about all the people who are, you know, in prison and even on death row who are not guilty. The last statistic I heard was like a minimum of 25%. So it happens. So the problem is maybe we need jail reform, but there's not money allocated for that. And yeah, that's the whole system. So, you know, maybe this would be a good insight for people to look at the conditions and maybe ask for jail reform. And here's one by Samantha S. She said there's a, quote, corporate-owned prison owned by GEO or GEO. I, I, I don't know. Yep, the car company. I had family there several years ago. They had a veterinarian working on the inmates in the infirmary. Oh my goodness, not even licensed for practicing medicine on humans. I strongly advise people educating themselves on corporate-owned prisons. You know, that's 
that is horrifying. It is just absolutely horrifying. I really didn't know there were corporate-owned prisons, but I guess in that case, they are able to take quite a bit of liberties that state-run or federally-run facilities can't. That's very disturbing. Unmasked Truth says, I am concerned that Richard Allen will deteriorate to the point he is found unfit to stand trial. He has never been in prison for a lengthy period of time. Have you witnessed this happening with your experience, or do people in his position eventually acclimate to their environment? Also, is he not receiving funds to purchase items that would make his stay more comfortable from commissary, or does his isolation conditions prevent him from having these additional luxuries, for lack of a better word? Okay, for the first question, most people do acclimate after a period of time, and but those are usually the ones that have like, you know, life in prison or whatever, and they're not getting out. So yeah, they become part of that whole society structure within the walls. Now some, and especially if you have a mental condition or emotional issue you're not treated for, then they deteriorate. But usually the ones that deteriorate that quickly, as it appears that Richard Allen has, usually they have some kind of pre-existing major mental health issue, um, unless he is having a health issue in general. So that is a question that only the family could answer. Now, even if he has mental health problems, he should still be seeing a doctor for that. Now, I don't know how Indiana runs their system, but that is the way that we do it here in Alabama. The second part to that is, did he be getting commissary? Yes. What that means is that like his family would put money on his books and then usually it's once a week. They are able to order things like maybe ramen noodles or whatever snacks, potato chips, little debbies, that kind of stuff, as well as soap and different things uh, that they might need for toiletries. The amount may be limited depending on where they're at, but certainly everyone should be able to get commissary, and I, I'm sure his family is able to put money on his books. Now, if he is in, again, that kind of isolation for intent to unalive yourself, then no. I don't know how to say this really to make you understand what they do, but they may take packages of things and put them in orifices. They may, you know, try to stuff different materials down into their throats. I mean, look, I, when somebody is in that kind of state, and they really mean to harm themselves, they literally can't have anything that could be used for harm. Do y'all understand? And I'm, I'm trying to keep this light because uh, anything that can be used to cut, you know, again, like paper, packages, stuff like that, you have to really, really be careful. Unless he is completely unstable, yes, he should be able to get stuff. I hope that made sense to y'all. Okay, Cindy says, No one should be in Westview. This prison has been an issue and has been sued for mistreatment of inmates. Prison was actually supposed to be shut down, but they keep paying fines and lawsuits and going on. I know individuals that have been in this prison, and the conditions are horrific. Every individual in this prison is being mistreated. Okay, are there some really bad places? Yes, and thank you, Cindy, for, you know, saying that, because honestly, I don't know what West feels like. I don't work there. I don't walk in the building, so I can't. All I can tell you is from the perspective of where I work. Now, we have a decent facility. You know, no place is perfect, but I am very lucky to work in comparatively a great system. I could not work in a situation where they allowed things to go on that they obviously do. Jail's never going to be a great place to be. Could it be horrible? Absolutely. And hopefully, if that is the case, yes, get him out of there. All right, this next one is by Holly Southern Style. I would say it's one thing to put somebody in an, an isolation cell for their own good, but I feel to isolate them without any kind of background noise like a radio and listen to any 
you know, thing, books on tapes, it does tax their mental health, and I don't think uh, would benefit anyone. I agree, okay? And again, I don't know his situation at Westville, but in our facility, even our ISO can hear. Most of them are within earshot of a TV or other inmates in the cells next to them, so they're able to carry on conversations. Okay, this next one is from Margaret Nainover. If I'm saying that wrong, Margaret, please let me know. I know we talk a lot. Um, and she says, why can he not go to his doctor as he was providing for himself and have his mental support? Anything else could say he's crazy enough or comes under adversary assertion of their own. Are they sides? You tell me. Okay, um, I think I know what you're talking about. Why can't he go to his own doctor? Well, first of all, your doctor, not going to walk into a prison. You know, they're just not. Every facility has its own doctor and nurses. So even if they're not his normal private doctor, they can request records and get everything so they can be up to speed with, with that. And hopefully they've got a good prison doctor. Again, every facility is different. Now, we know that he has been moved. By the time this video comes out, this is probably old news. But I found this today in a group. Now, this is allegedly moved to Miami County Grissom facility. Anyway, the person that posted this said they could not share the file to, to show the actual transfer because it's not public yet. I know they were trying to move him to Cass County. Honestly, that makes me a little bit more nervous because... I'm assuming that a prison has more personnel than a county jail. Um, a county jail usually doesn't have that many. It's hard to find people to work now, much less in a jail situation, because even when we have new people come in, sometimes within a, a day or two, they're like, I'm out. It's a challenge, okay? I love my job. I love my inmates. I try to take care of them, but it's not for everybody, okay? Whole different lifestyle. Now, let's address this. Talking about the trustees and the way that he is actually treated. You can have the nicest facility in the world and have really crappy people working there, okay? I mean, how the correctional officers treat him, how they talk to him, how the trustees, how medical talks to him. It doesn't matter if you have a great facility and great food. It can still wear on you mentally and break you down if the support staff are horrendous to you. And a lot of times it's not overt. It's not like, you know, they're just screaming it out loud. It can be said under the breath or just the attitude that people have. And, you know, that's wrong. In my opinion, that is wrong. We as a team try to treat every inmate with respect until, you know, it they do something that makes us have to change the way that we interact or change where they're located or stuff like that. So, you know, in my opinion, moving him might make his conditions better. Hopefully the food will be better. Hopefully, you know, he'll be able to see his lawyers and all the things that they're saying that he can't do now. Will his treatment improve? Only depends on the character and integrity of the people that work at the facility that he is transferred to. So let me just say across the board, I am not trying to say that Richard Allen did not have a really hard time. It could have been a, a bad facility, bad personnel. I don't know. In my last video, all I was trying to say is that the conditions of protective custody, the size of the rooms, the mat on the floor, these are standard, okay? That's standard. And you can have a great facility that's really nice and really great food. Um, you're, it's still going to be your standard. If he finds himself having a life in prison for whatever reason, then, I mean, his situation will improve. He will probably be in a general population. It's really hard to think about an innocent person being in jail. Unfortunately, society doesn't care if you are guilty or innocent. If you are behind bars, you are looked at a certain way. And that's just the truth. So elected officials aren't campaigning for better jail conditions because in general, people don't care, right? Just lock them up, throw away the key. Anyway, it's a very controversial subject and never at any time did I mean to seem uncompassionate 
about Richard Allen. It's a huge change. We'll see the evidence to see whether he's guilty or not. I'm not convinced either way, but I absolutely do want to see him go to trial and have a fair shake. And let's see the evidence because, you know, there's too many other inconsistencies and BS going on. One more thing before I go, I am going to leave a couple of links from some other channels. It's caused quite a stir. And I, I really don't know why, because I saw videos like this like months and months ago, but I, it's apparently coming on the radar. There are some controversial videos that suggest that Libby and Abby were not found on the ground, like Ellie says, but on the edge of Deer Creek. It is very compelling. It is something to think about. And so I am going to leave those links, and you watch them, and you tell me what you think what you see in these videos, okay? Have a great week, and for heaven's sakes, stay silky.